Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Mr. Fancy Penguin, and today we are going to continue playing Doki Doki Literature Club right where we left off. So without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, guys, here it is, Doki Doki Literature Club. We are going to finish reading the last two poems of the day. So let's start with uh, Natsuke, I guess. You are the pink-haired bitch. Hmm, I like your last one better. Really? Why so? I thought it was better than this time. Well, yeah, I can tell you were a little more daring with this one. We are really not good enough for that yet. It fell flat. That may be true, but I just wanted to try something different. I'm still figuring this all out. I mean, I always like poems that aren't trying too hard. I hate when people try to sound fancy or add more meaning just by using annoying and complicated language. Just make it simple, cute, and to the point. You're his head over heels for all this cryptic nonsense. And that is the point. <laughs> that is the point. But I see right through that BS. Ha. Making your reader look so hard for all this deep meaning is just an excuse to have no meaning at all. I guess there's one way to look at it. Yeah, that makes sense, but I'm trying to impress Yori here, so... Worm has their own opinion. But my opinion is the best opinion, I'm sure you've figured that out already. No, no, fuck off. No, it's not. Anyway, here's my poem. Maybe we'll learn something. Oh boy, here we go. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy held me up and took me to the nurse. I try not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking uh, to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She gross. The better the world is better off without spiders. And I'm, gonna, and I'm gonna tell- Oh, that's really mean. I don't like you anymore. You're a really pink bitch. Yeah, it was a little longer. This was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think it was the best I could do. No, of course not, but you suck. You're a bitch, okay? <laughs> That's what I'm gonna call- I'm not even calling you Natsuki. You're just pink-haired bitch now because you're such an asshole. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. It helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, uh, anyone- oh shit. Oh, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you think people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter, it can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'll make fun of you or think less of you. But that doesn't make people stupid. Who cares about what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. That's funny. Uh, about something similar today. Now that you mention it, you're absolutely right. That is kind of weird, huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah, she said a poem about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. Did she really? Am I... my... what? Am I getting mind fucked? What the... what? That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, yours is pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has come up with weird hobbies. Not there's anything wrong with that. It's not like I would judge her or anything. Natsuki has trouble finding words. I guess I should try to be mean- I shouldn't not- I should try not to be mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff, I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. You never made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she learned her lesson. Well, I, if I would say so, even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. it makes sense. The conveying emotions is important, but I want to make uh, people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too. So I look forward to it. Oh, I'm going to write another poem for tomorrow? Really? How many poems am I going to write? Uh, I mean, Sayori. Alright, ooh, I like this one, Fancy. There's some nice feelings in it, and... Oh, I'm glad. Does it mean it's better than yesterday's? Mm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. 
that's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out poems are good or bad. That's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I can't argue with that. I'm not uh, sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of the whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me, ni me neither. I mean, I were. <laughs> uh, why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Oh, you want me to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep, at, uh, keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Well, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> what the fuck? Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Bittersweet. That is the word. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad. I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help you give that rain cloud a little hug. And make a nice happy rainbow. Aw, that's really... Cute. So Yuri, that's unexpectedly poetic. It is. Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Fancy. You're absolutely welcome. I should write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles. I pop off pop off my scalp like the like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place to keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts all in a row. That is really creepy. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. That's pretty creepy. I'm like getting chills. I don't know why. That's really creepy to me. Night after night, more dreams, friends after friends, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering secrets, hiding in nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my little caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up and in come my friends. If they come in in such a hurry, do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf one after another, holding them out to each and every friend, every and every bottle, but every time I let one go, it shatters against tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. Those are supposed to be for my friends, my friends who are smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something, but all I hear is echo, echo, echo inside my head. Jesus. Wow. That... That's concerning. Um, that's really cons. Yeah, holy crap. Did you really write this? Of course I did. Then I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem. But, I mean, I think something like this coming from you taught me the whole, a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. It's almost kind of. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, it's creepy. Well, it's concerning. You being cheerful. Well, never. No, never mind it. Um. Go see some help, maybe. Like, really. I wasn't too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, uh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've got pretty passionate about this, huh? Hope you, uh, you keep it up. Yeah. Writing is... Writing, it's the best. I'm going to keep writing until I die. Don't get ahead of yourself. I had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. I mean, you could write until you're 80, you can write until you're 90, you can write until you're on your deathbed. I don't see a problem with that. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit in the front of the room, is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll end up embarrassing ourselves in front of, uh, instead of getting new any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last-minute preparations. Don't worry so much. 
we're going to keep it simple, okay? We uh, won't need much more than a few decorations. So Yuri has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. What are we going to be doing for the event? Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be per performing... Um, Monica, yeah, we're going to be having poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. The cool part is we're going to let everyone else come up and recite poems too. So they're just putting it on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. So what's been, uh, who's been calling the posts up for us to see? Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't tell us to start putting these posters up, did you? Well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagine it, Yori shakes her head in fear. Guys, no, Sayori. I understand where you're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yori have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. I thought you asked her to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess it's kind of over. I uh, kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But, but, I think we should should give it our best. You're the only one, uh, only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put a good performance, then we'll inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone that literature is all about. Yeah, that's the spirit. It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. Yes. That's right. And if it's those reasons we're, that we're all in this club today. Thank you, Monica. You're really the team leader here. Do you want to share that with others to inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it takes, uh, all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. And Tsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me with no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think Sayori and I have been trying really hard to get new members. The least you can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but it looks like Tsuki doesn't have any argument left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright, phew. What about you, Yuri? What about you? Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly gets around at everyone else's expectant faces. So, I, I guess they don't really have a choice. That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This is a club seriously going to be the death of me. Is that foreshow foreshadowing? I think, I think it might be foreshadowing. Yeah, I might be wrong, but I think that's foreshadowing. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice for setting them in front of each other. No way. Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no, don't worry. I'll start off with today. Help everyone a little bit feel more comfortable. Can I go next? Of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to a specific poem she has in mind for herself. Then she stands in front behind the podium. Uh, the title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reading her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line. She recites, bring the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? A glance around me, everyone has their eyes on Monica. So Yori looks amazed. Yori has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the rec uh, recitation. The Mm -mm. The four of us applaud. <coughs> Sorry, my bad, guys. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica. Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next. Yori's fired up all of a sudden. Yori clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. The poem is called... Anxiously uh, glances at each of us. You can do it, Yori. It's called... After image of a crimson eye, shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost as what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns and structure that she initiates with perfect timing. 
This must be a rare glimpse into the world on fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as she bewildered even herself. It's up to me to save this situation. It's the first time to uh, I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds her poem to her chest and she rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Yuri hops out of the chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah, uh, aha. Uh -huh. What the hell is even that? Sorry, I giggled. Uh, so Yuri, it's a lot harder than I thought. How do you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think about it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come to the best. It'll come to you the best. Come out the best way. Fuck. I see. I see. Okay then. Sarah brings her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. Serene and bittersweet. Bittersweet. Uh, if I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it, but hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. Uh, even Fancy liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. There we go. But it might be the other poems wouldn't really uh, work quite as well with that kind of delivery. I don't understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours that that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. Uh, they might as well more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's well, I've been practicing this kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. Well, that makes sense. I understand. Next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have that much time before the festival, you know? Okay. Well, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Fancy. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Fancy lower everyone's standards a little bit before I... That is so mean. Holy crap, you pink bitch. Natsuki, it's fine. It's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have that much of a selection of what to read. Oh my god, my nose is so fucking itchy. I just <laughs> I just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really good as everyone else. Don't worry about it th so much. I think it's about less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that will improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right then. That would just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki. Uh, fuck. I'm not gonna even try. Gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem's called. It's called. What are you looking at? Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem's called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. Well, she's a little uh, an enthusiast. Her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken out loud. Uh, the words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to, uh, back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not uh, make me do that again. Uh, well... Do you want to feel at least prepared enough to recite uh, a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people, but with just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would work the. Uh, it would be the other way around. Well, that's just how it is. So, well, I guess if that's the case, you won't have to, uh, much worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming uh, today. It might be hard, but I hope that all you have been an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time when you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find uh, some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised if you're, uh, that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me, uh, it makes me really happy. Ah, uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know festival is coming up, uh, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. 
it's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to, to continue that. As for the festival, uh, we'll, we're, uh, blah, blah, blah. As for, for the festival, we'll finally be planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to pre prepare. Monday is the big day. I can't wait. I can't do this. I can't do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If, if, if it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two. Always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Jeez, guys. Don't make it such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how much of us respond to that? It's looking fancy. You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with uh, Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. Like how we get to... I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day, you already asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I like Yori better. Fuck. I'm so sorry. I sound like an ass. I don't want to click it. Walking home with Yori, huh? What's the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I'll feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That's nothing to do with what I just said. He admitted it. Jeez, there's no... Not, there's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe, but I'd just like, uh, like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? So, Yuri, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. No way in the club is re a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me in such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. Even if there's something that makes you, her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Very true. Alright, here we go. I'm gonna try and impress Yuri again, so let's, let's do this. Ambient. Um, contamination. Um, whirlwind. Uh, Crimson. She did use Crimson in one of her poems, so. I don't know. Uh, unrestrained. Disaster. After image. Raindrops. Heartbeat. Passion. Fantasy. Secretive. Destiny. Shoot, maybe too far sweet. Uh, depression? No. Uh, starscape. Wrath. Rain cloud. Aura. Agonizing. Um. Tragedy. Oh man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. Uh huh. You must have a lot of determination, starting this club and not picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember, the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're writing to help, willing to help out for the festival too. I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Oh, where's uh, where's Sayori? Were you complaining about yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. Where, where's Sayori? I don't see her. I'm not talking about our part of our part of the festival, but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. Sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Do you usually have fried squid? Squid, that's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on, are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Uh, I didn't say I didn't, don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Mon Ika. I'm sure that's probably Japanese or something for squid. That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Uh, never mind. Let's just focus on your own event for now, okay? Fine, fine. Your reactions aren't fun as Yori's or Sayori's anyway. Where's Sayori? Where's Sayori? Oh, there you are. 
sitting this in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. Oh, over to her. Hey, Sayori. Uh, I wave my hand in front of her face. You're spacing out again. What's wrong, with Sayori? Sorry, don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Of course, why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry about too much about me. I'm fine, see? Shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from fun of everyone. Okay, here's the thing. I've had experiences. That is... That's big red flags or something. I'm gonna let you guys figure that out, but... Those are big red flags. I already glanced at Siri before turning back towards everyone else, but the conversation had already dis uh, dispersed everyone back into the usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who's shuffling through some papers on her desk. Fancy, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? Uh, and what do you mean that? Maybe I'm reading into it a little bit too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed uh, anything about her. Monica appears across the room with Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber racer up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind, but I'm surprised I'm not asking you, Fancy. You certainly know a lot her. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really like this. She's always talked to me about things that bother her, but this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, it's not your- I know it's not your problem, but I just want to ask if you knew so anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no, it's important to me too. I mean, I'm always friends with her, and if I- I- and I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Are you sure about that? She seems like she wants to be left alone, are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe she has a thing on her mind as you fancy. Me? How on earth you come off that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say that much, but Sarah talks about you more than anything else, you know? Oh, I feel like such an ass now. But, I don't know what to do. She's been so much happier ever since you've joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sarah's always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now. It's always been. Uh, you're so funny, Fancy. Have you been... Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful because that's just how she is when she's around you? I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions. Should just forget about what I said? I try to talk to her to try not think about it for now. Uh, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I always know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she isn't keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear it from here. I sigh and sit down, sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but it's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her, how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much. Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary, but there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room, suddenly I notice Yara peeing at me from over her book. Uh, but she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. Uh, I've never seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord, so I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now, it's a little easier for me to do. I stand up from my desk and sit uh, in one next to her own. So, see, here's the thing, guys. I feel so bad because I, I was just helping Monica. Not Monica, fucking um, the girl that's feeling down right now. And... I, I know what's probably going on through her head, and I probably caused it, but my character has feelings for Yuri. I don't know what to do. Um, like, I don't want her to hurt herself, but I still want to make an approach on Yuri. I, I don't know what to do. Um, I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But I could tell you want to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How are you even able to tell I was thinking like that? Well, it's something I can do a lot, so it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. Not that I was staring at you or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certain... Uh, 
There are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves, but if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Uh, it's not really that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she was a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me, so I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh? That's quite romantic. No, it's not. No, no, it's not. Let me say something so stupid. It's not that. I just don't want you to misunderstand. Sayori and I have been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, uh, I see. Then perhaps it's unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into a little bit too much. Fancy. Uh, the world is full of meaning often and deep in plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Uh, so you think there might be something behind it after all? Mm. I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what, uh, what may be going on inside her head. I think I know what's going on inside her head, and it's not good. Uh, and she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behaviors today, too, and also feel some concern for her. But in your case, I looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess it was the, that was the case, Sayori. She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, no, don't say that, you fuckwad. You fuckwad. No, you idiot sandwich. Don't say that, you idiot. Oh, fuck. Fuck, I don't know. Um, but you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. This deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious. As if she's searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, the person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you as someone honest and caring may uncover feelings you aren't aware in you. That is, I think that she would be a very fortunate person to how you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy, so I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. That's a compliment. Not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it, yeah, I am. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to a club room. Why don't we share poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone is going to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I remember. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. All right, here we go. Whose poem should I read first? I kind of want to go with Sayori because I'm kind of worried about her. But I want to read Yuri's first. I'm going to read Yuri's first. Fancy, your writing has only proved in these in the last few days. Every poem you've shown to me has been nothing short of spectacular. I can really, th I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious, even. I don't think it, uh, it ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's a wrong way to put this. That has never did come naturally to me. But I've never been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. Is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling. I'm so glad I got a chance to share my writing. I never thought it would uh, it would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at something you have never even shared with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but it's not like I really have a choice. What do you mean? Well, you always smile sadly. Fancy, during lunchtime I eat by myself. Did, did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact... I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading, but oh, that's the music changed too. Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But books are so full of amazing, inspiring people. Holy shit, my fucking nose. Uh, people, people you want to fall in love with, or people you just want to uh, know will make really good friends. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face, or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way. I'm surrounded by friends every day, you know? And those friends don't laugh at me, they don't tease me for spacing out all the time, they don't make fun of my body type, and they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Fancy. I'm, it's opposite, I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make friends... Uh, I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. Oh jeez, I have all these feelings. 
and all I could do with them is read and write. <clears throat> uh, and it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you that I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful. That's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Fancy. I speak too slowly, as I can guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things, but every time, you have always treated me just like everyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined the club hoping I would make friends, and I would say her at least one success. Wouldn't you? Um, if you put it that way, yeah, we really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her heads, head in her hands, but this time she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Ghost Under Light Part 2. We got, we got a sequel, guys. We got a fucking sequel. Okay. The tendrils of my hair illuminate behind the amber glow, baffling. In the distance, a blue-green light flickers. A lone figure chases across its path, a silhouette obstructing the eerie glow. My heart pounds, the silhouette glows. Closer, closer. I open my umbrella, casting shadow to shield me from visibility, but I am too late. He steps into the street light. I gasp and drop my umbrella. The light flickers, my heart pounds. He raises his arm. Time stops. The only indication of movement is the ember light flickering against his outstretched arm. The flickering light is a uh, rhythm with the pounding of my heart, uh, teasing me from uh, succumbing to this forbidden emotion. Have you ever heard of ghosts feeling warmth before? Giving up on um, understanding, I laugh. Understanding is overrated. I touch his hand. The flickering stops. Ghosts are blue-green. My heart is amber. Okay, I feel like she's talking about me. That is really beautiful, though. That is a really beautiful poem. Finish it, I start to hand it back to Yuri, but instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Do you dislike it? No, of course not. I just don't really know how I should respond. Oh, uh, usually cryptic. It wasn't hard to figure out what this one was about. You know, if I ever explain this one, that's fine. I understand this one. Or is having an even hard seeing more than usual. Does it mean this one mean a lot to you? You already know it's. I'm not really good with words, but I'm happy they shared it with me. So thank you. And I hope we can keep spending time together. Despite my inability to make eye contact, I see a faint smile emerge on Yuri's lips. I once again try to hand the poem back to her, but instead, Yuri gently takes my hand and pushes them back towards me. I hesitate to respond to her warm touch. You can, um, the poem is, once again, Yuri falls to form a complete sentence. You mean I can keep it? Yuri nods. Oh, that's so f sweet. Oh, that warms my heart. Oh, that's, oh, that's so nice. Oh, that's, oh, fuck, that's so nice. I'm really lost for words, guys. That's so cute. Again, Yuri faintly smiles as she doesn't want me to notice. You always, you always make me feel nice. I know I'm not good with people, but I hope that I can return the favor sometimes. Yeah, don't worry. I think you can do a good job. You've already finally turns back towards me. I guess we should move on before Monica says anything. But I'm sure we can talk again later. Yeah, I'm sure we will. With that, Yuri timidly smiles at me and I return to my seat so I can put her poem away. Whose poem shall I read next? Okay, well, whose poem? I kind of want to read. I don't want to read uh, Pink Haired Bitch. Let's read Monica. Hi, Fancy. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in a club is the only thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people, I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever I do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. Um, uh, also make me happy to see. Anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I'll let Marco take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Your style's gone so refined, Fancy. You've always been teaching me a lot of things, hasn't she? She really has. She means a lot to me. Well, I guess so. Uh, yeah, I've been noticing how much time you spend with her. Uh, I think I've heard her say words in the past couple of days and she's talked the whole year. Not sure how you did it, but that's pretty impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have a way. I have a way. Uh, well, she really needs, to, needs some patience and a way to talk about all the things in her head, I guess. Uh, I'm still getting the hang of it myself. Hmm. You're suddenly putting a lot of effort. You must really like her. Uh, that's... Uh, it's awfully suspicious, you know? Spending time with her in the club room every day, reading the edgy novel of her. It's not edgy. 
not fucking edgy, okay? It's fucking cool. You fucking deal with it. Well, I just feel bad as she has a hard time socializing. It makes me feel, uh, making me sure, make me sure that she does not spend time. Fuck. It makes me want to make sure that she doesn't spend all the time alone. Besides, the novel isn't too bad either, you know? Alright, alright. I get, I got you. Just be careful, alright? Uh, I know that Yuri isn't used to opening herself up, so if something bad happens while she's vulnerable, then it couldn't really be hard for her. Her books aren't total, aren't total escape from reality, they're just a bandage. You say that like I'm, sh I'm going to hurt her. Sorry, I didn't mean like that. If anything, she might accidentally hurt herself. Anyway, I share my poem with you now, right? Er, uh, alright. The Lady Who Knows Everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth, the lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am in fever. Uh, lost drift in the sky, a victim to the occurrence of the wind. Day after day I searched, I searched with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But what, when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, legend and all its remains, the last dim star glittering in the timid sky. So one day the wind ceases to blow, I fall and I fall and I fall and I fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless, but in hand catches me between thumb and forefinger. The hand all of a sudden, uh, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose. We seek only the impossible, and I'm not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. Okay, that's pretty deep. I, I like that. Pretty meaningful, pretty deep. I, I dig it, I dig it. You know, I feel like I'm learning a lot, looking for answers or sorts of things that gives life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it's a kind of... Uh, it, it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. Never really put that much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical, because if you had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's some, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in this club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Are you surprised? I mean, everything, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans are two-dimensional creatures. I think you uh, know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Uh, yeah, that, anyway. Here's my writing tip of the day. Let's fucking hear it. Let's go. What's the tip of the day? Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid? It's not that good. It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put in so much into. But to find out more people who enjoy writing, the sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just uh, telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want you to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way. It'll make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I got absolutely zero out of that, but thank you. I I appreciate it. But, guys, we are going to end it uh, at this point. Like every other episode, we're going to finish uh, reading the other two poems in the next episode, which you guys will see tomorrow. But for now, we're going to end it here. I feel bad for Sayori. Um... I don't know, I feel like, I know it might happen to her because she's having these thoughts. I'm gonna try my best to stop it, but my, I am going after Yuri, as in her heart, and uh, I feel like I'm getting there. I feel like I'm getting there. Maybe we'll go all the way in the next episode. You guys will have to see. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, give me a like, consider subscribing, click up here to see the first episode in the series, and click up here to see what YouTube recommends for you. And. I'll see you in the next vid. Stay fancy.